All right, good morning. We are blessed to be here and thankful to be here Amen. for our Thanksgiving service. And we're going to start our uh, singing with page 52, Blessed Be the Name. It's great to see you all here at Sardis Baptist Church this morning. Um, I was looking at the third verse of that song we just sang, um, and it says, He breaks the power of cancel sin, and his blood can make the foulest clean. Man, we've come to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ that has made a way for us to be clean in the eyes of a holy God. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm so glad that you're here today. It's a beautiful day. A beautiful day. Thank you for being here. Um, if you would grab your bulletins, we've got a few uh, prayer uh, updates that I want our church family to be aware of. Uh, be in prayer for Mr. Billy. Uh, he's uh, He got sick. We had an unexpected visitor at church last Sunday. Uh, you know, we, there, there's, a, I believe there's a tech demons. Uh, there's viral demons that show, show up. But I think there ended up being like 14 of us that ended up being sick from some kind of little stomach bug. So, um, but everybody's made the turn and I just... You, optimistic yes optimistic i lost some weight so that just makes the thanksgiving that much better i got more room so <laughs> but um mr billy gotten sick as well uh, he does get his stitches out from his uh surgeries on tuesday uh, but he's had a pretty rough week so be in prayer for him and uh, miss evelyn she always says the same thing pray for me that i don't kill him i was like yes ma'am so <laughs> um uh, let's see who else on our list. Um, continue to pray for my dad. Uh, he had a little mini stroke this week. Um, just, uh, but I talked to mom yesterday and she said he was doing, she almost said great, uh, but she backed off and said good. So, <laughs> so he was having a better day. So we're, we're thankful and blessed for that. Uh, pray for Beth Higgins. She's uh, still in the hospital. She needs a uh, liver transplant, I believe. Uh, she's battling liver cancer and is, uh, is pretty sick. Um, got a praise church family, Austin Randall. Um, he's the boy they joined our church last Sunday. He had his arm in a sling, went to the orthopedic oncologist because they found a mass in his elbow. Uh, it was a benign, fibrous, something, something, something. Uh, that's not going to require surgery. And uh, it was just uh, praise the Lord. So they were very relieved and rejoicing over that. But so his arm's still broken. His arm's still broken. They're going to get that put back together. Uh, but, the, <laughs> but, the, uh, but the tumor that was there is... is yeah. the, in Benign, yeah, he told me he broke it in half. I was like, no, he really did. Yeah. He really did. Uh, so, so they're still got to fix his arm, but uh, but hallelujah, uh, that that tumor is a benign uh, scar tissue type thing that uh, that should resolve itself. So I know Megan and, and Tim were very relieved about that. 
Um, be in prayer for Eric Albright. Um, I talked to Melody yesterday. He's back in the hospital. Uh, they're doing some wound care on him. Um, and pray for little Maverick Castillo. She's, uh, I think she may be growing a little faster than she's supposed to. Go for the ultrasound on Tuesday uh, to confirm all of that. We're going to pray that that's perfect. Uh, so just to be in prayer for them. Um, also be in prayer for uh, Betty Lou Watson. Sorry to say Betty Berry, but I found out this morning in Sunday school, there's like three of those that have been running around these parts. So um, but she's having some bronchitis, some health issues. That's David Berry's sister. Um, so uh, we want to be in prayer for her. Um, as far as announcements, our Thanksgiving fellowship will be after church today. And today is Hudson McWright's birthday. He said, he, oh, is, he, is he four today? Happy birthday, honey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hudson. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. He's going to be four. And actually, if he was ready to turn four, and he said, no, I stay three. And then we said, he like, three was a pretty good life. I'm going to stick with that one. I'm doing the same thing. I'm still 20. So, <laughs> happy birthday, honey. Um, Thanksgiving's on the 23rd, 25th is David Berry's birthday. Uh, he'll be four also. And um, November, there will be no men's and women's Bible study this week. But next week, the ladies will start their new study, uh, The Full Armor of God. And men, we will begin the book of Colossians. So come be a part of that. Not this coming Wednesday, the Wednesday after. Um, I can go ahead and tell you, ladies, buckle up. Uh, uh, Trish went through the first part of the, one of the video sessions. Uh, she was watching it, and I was catching some pieces of it. Man, it's going to be strong. So, so come make plans to be a part of that. She has books mm -hmm. uh, here, and there's also a place you can sign up to download some online content and stuff that goes with it. So... Mm, good stuff. Great day to be in the house of the Lord. Great day to be at Sardis Baptist Church. We're so thrilled you're here. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, thankful for the privilege of being in your house today. Thank you for these that have come, Lord, on your day to be in your house. And God, we thank you for the beautiful weather outside. Just another reminder of how wonderful you are. And God, for these that we've mentioned this morning that are struggling, that need a touch from you, God, we pray that you will reach down and, and be the great physician, Lord. Heal them and bring healing where it's needed. Bless their caregivers, Father. And God, we just pray that you'll be glorified in their lives and in their circumstance, Father. And God, I just pray above all that as we continue our worship this morning, that it'll be pleasing to you, Father, because we've come here together in one heart that loves you, Father. And God, we just pray that, that you'll be honored and God glorified in all that takes place. So bless our time. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Trish Cass is very excited about our Bible study because it has a DVD yeah. to lead us and guide us. And those Amen. ladies that come every week understand. Amen. <laughs> We're going to continue singing at page 11, <coughs> Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Next, we will uh, turn to page 786. Count your blessings. which is just a few songs that are just the one verse. So we're going to turn to page uh, 513 and sing, Thank You, Lord. Children, thank you, but we thank him for our children. Amen. 
And then we will uh, finish with page 426, blessed be the tie that binds. children. A little bit. A little bit of love goes a long way, yeah. Turn it up some more. Hello, hello. Is that a little better right there? We can go some more. There we go. How's that? Is that better? There goes a whole lot of, of brother, what Brother Mick's thankful for right there. Especially that one closing the door. Amen. She's so cute. Mm -mm -mm. What an incredible gift from the Lord. Um, the number of children. Thank you for bringing your kids to church. Wow. It's just a blessing uh, to see our, 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 the vibrant growth that God is allowing us in our church. It's a gift from him. We give him glory for it. Thank you. Um, if you would open your Bibles with me this morning to the Old Testament book of Malachi. Uh, it's the last book in the Old Testament. If you hit the red letters in Matthew, you went too far. So um, the Old Testament book of Malachi, I'm going to begin reading in chapter 3, verse 16, through the fourth verse of chapter 4. So Malachi chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. And if you would please stand with me, if you're willing and able, out of a reverence to the reading of God's word. Malachi chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with my statutes and judgments. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, thanking you for the privilege that we have to assemble today to be in your house. God, I thank you for your word, the Bible. I thank you for the instruction of, of the Old Testament prophets, Father, how the word you spoke through them, God, is so valid for us today. God, I just pray now that you will empower me with your Holy Spirit, that you will embolden me to proclaim this message, Father. God, I pray that you will bind Satan and his demonic forces from our midst today. I pray that your Holy Spirit will well up in us, and Father, we will leave here changed because we have met with you. Father, the world is a dark place, Father, but you are the light of the world. God, we just pray that, that as we enter this time of preaching, Father, God, that you'll open our hearts to hear from you. Father, I pray above all that you'll be glorified this morning through the preaching of your word. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The week started off a little rough. Um, 
I've told people all week that it looked like a crime scene around the guest house because everyone got this, this stomach thing at the same time and there were bodies laying everywhere. It was awful. Um, but we all recovered by about Wednesday. Um, and, and, and I'd begun praying. <laughs> prayed a lot during those times too. But I began praying about what God would have me bring this week. And, and I thought, man, it's Thanksgiving. You know, uh, there are so many things that I'm thankful for. There's so many things that I'm grateful for. And as I begin to, to spend time alone in the Word, spend time in prayer and, and meditating on, on what God would have me bring, the Holy Spirit said, go to Malachi. And I went, what? Because, you know, uh, Malachi is not the, uh, the typical Thanksgiving text. Usually, you know, it's preached from the Psalms, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Um, but you get to Malachi, and it's one of the strongest Old Testament prophet books of judgment that was coming upon the nation of Israel. And I thought, okay, Lord, how are we going to be thankful for that? Um, but God began to remind me of some things. Um, as he led me to this text this week, that uh, there are so many things in, in the natural realm, in the world, that, that I'm thankful for. I'm so thankful for my family. I'm so thankful for our church family. I'm so thankful for, for health, for the, for the daily provisions, all the things that God has blessed us with. And then God began to, to work in my spirit. He began to show me that I need to be thankful for the spiritual things in my life as well. That, that the things that, I, that I'm thankful for uh, uh, should include the character of who God is. And so as I began to read through the book of Malachi and study, I realized that, uh, that Israel was in a pretty bad place. And, and toward the end, as Malachi is closing out this word from the Lord, um, he gives us some things that we can be thankful for. Uh, you have to remember, uh, the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about the prophet Malachi. Uh, other than this, he was faithful to the task that God called him to. And I thought, man, if we don't know anything else about him, then we could be friends. Because he, 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 we don't have a history on who Malachi is. We don't know any, uh, hardly anything about him. But he was called by God to go deliver a very tough message to the nation of Israel. Israel, there was something incredible that had been happening. Uh, the priests had been going through their sacrificial traditions. They had been sacrificing animals that people would bring, and it was all a bunch of um, half-hearted worship. Uh, the, their gratitude toward God was kind of ceremonial, if you will. Uh, in the earlier parts of Malachi, he goes through, the God, God goes through and says, you bring me the blind, you bring me the lame. They were bringing the animals to be sacrificed that were their blemish, the ones they wanted to cull from the herd anyway. They were not bringing God their very best. And I begin to think as, as we enter this Thanksgiving season, um, I should be thankful. Am I bringing God my very best? Because that, that, that is what brings him honor and glory is when I do that. And they hadn't been doing that. The priests had become wicked. And so God sent Malachi, the prophet, to deliver a message of warning to them because of, their, of where they were, because of their spiritual condition and where they were. And, and he promised judgment upon them because they had turned away from him and they weren't following him with their whole heart. Uh, Half-hearted obedience is still disobedience. Uh, God does not desire our leftovers and the extra things in our life. He wants everything and every part of us. If we truly want to have the kind of relationship with the Father that, that we should, that we, that, that we should desire, it involves him being the central focus of everything. He's the most important thing. And I'm so thankful that I serve a God that I can come to in that manner. And so as we get to the latter parts here of the, of the book of Malachi, um, the Bible begins there in verse 16. It says, then those who feared the Lord. And, I, and so I was reminded of the first, I've got a few things here that I'm thankful for. And the first thing is I'm thankful for the remnant. I'm thankful for the group of people that even though the majority of Israel had turned away from God, they were sacrificing just because and God, the, the worship of the true God did not mean that much to them. There was still a faithful remnant and that'll always be the case. Uh, the Bible said every time that Israel got away from God, there was always a group that stayed close to him. And I believe that in these last days that God's going to rise up a remnant church. And I believe that we're going to be a part of it uh, because we're choosing to stand for righteousness. We're choosing to stand for the things of God in a world and in a culture that has totally turned away from him. And so we see this group here. The Bible says, then those who feared the Lord. So there was still this group. Uh, one, one thing they had in common is that they all feared the Lord. Remember, when we begin to do things the way that, uh, that are against the things of God, uh, that becomes foolishness because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we have this group here that, that feared the Lord. 
They had that thing in common. And I pray that each and every one of us have a reverent, holy fear of the Lord. Because that should mold and, check, and, and shape every decision we make. Because we consider and consult him with the things that we do. We don't do it on our own and then see what God thinks. Because he's already told us uh, how, how we should do things. So he says there, those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. So here, I, I can imagine what this looks like. You've got all of Israel. They're, they're doing whatever they want. He got onto them because they had married into pagan cultures. They had all these things that they were being influenced by that were not of God. But you had this one group, and they were hanging out together, and they were talking to one another. The Bible says right there that they spoke to one another, that, that they had communication with each other. They were encouraging each other. They were fellowshipping together. They were doing a lot of the things that we're doing now here um, and, and when the world out there wasn't. And so this group was, would have been smaller, and they would have uh, probably felt pretty isolated. Uh, you ever go out into the world as a Christian and feel like you're the odd man out? Uh, uh, that, that we don't fit in? Uh, I'm, uh, we shouldn't. I don't want to fit into a culture and a world that doesn't honor God. But yet here, he, he, he's, this group, they spoke to one another. They encouraged one another. And the Bible says, and the Lord listened and heard them. Now, that's very interesting because... The Bible says that God inclines his ear to his children. And so as he's sitting here, as, as Malachi has write, been writing about all this judgment, he gets to this part about this faithful remnant that feared the Lord, and they were there fellowshipping and communicating, encouraging one another, keep going, keep going, keep staying true, keep doing the things that we're supposed to do to honor God. It'll be worth it in the long run. They had had this discussion earlier of, uh, of, about how serving God wasn't profitable and how it was just a bunch of fooey. And this group is saying, no, you're wrong. We got to keep serving and following and chasing after God. And the Bible says the Lord listened and he heard them, which means that he inclined his ear to them. He was in their presence. Uh, the first thing you can, you can mark down and take to the bank, first thing I'm thankful for is that the remnant will always be heard by God. Those people that, that choose to stand up for the cause of Christ, that choose to stand up for the things of God, can know without a doubt that God hears them. That God hears them. That's huge. And, and I'm so thankful for that, that God doesn't just turn away from us even when the culture turns away from him. Aren't you glad that our relationship with him is not based on what everybody else is doing? Can you imagine what that would be like? That God only hears my prayers if everybody else in the nation is, is praying, if everyone else in the nation is doing what they're, you know, is following after and chasing after God? Yeah, God wouldn't have a whole lot to say to us, would he? But yet here we see that, that they had his presence, they, the remnant that here, this group. And then look at the rest of the verse. The Bible says, so a book of remembrance was written before him. The next thing I'm thankful for is that God remembers. Um, it was common and customary in those days that the kings would have a scribe come in. And if there was some kind of event, some kind of charge against an individual that took place, they would record the details of it. In the books of the kings, they would have a book of remembrance so that later, if something came up, they could go back and look and go, oh, no, no, on this day you said this. They were documenting things way back then. As a matter of fact, in, in Esther, it's mentioned where they brought out the, the book of, the, of remembrance and said, oh, no, that's what he said, but then they put him to death. So, so we see here that the Bible says, so God, a, a book of remembrance was written before him. So as these individuals that are fearing the Lord, this remnant group are together, uh, there, there's a book of remembrance that, God, that was written in God's presence. God didn't need it to remind him because God doesn't forget anything. But it would have been a way to encourage this remnant group that, to know that the things that they were encouraging one another with, that God took notice and it was being written down. He said a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. And, and I... I had to stop for a minute and think, okay, um, self-examination is a wonderful thing. Um, you know, we've got to get to a point where we don't, where we look in the mirror, we take a good hard look at ourselves and we say, you know what, how am I doing? You know, am I truly chasing after the Lord with all I have? Um, if, the, if this is being recorded in, in a book of remembrance, what's God going to remember? What's going to be the, the line items by my name? You know, is it, are they going to be like this group that he's mentioning here that were faithful and that, and that stuck together and that were encouraging one another even when everyone else wasn't? Um, I pray that that would be the case for us. And so they had the, he had this book of remembrance um, <coughs> that was written down. Verse 17, 
They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. Um, I'm thankful for God's ownership. He declares that they shall be mine. Who? The ones that fear the Lord. The ones that live according to his calling and his purpose. He says they shall be mine. I am so glad that I am owned by the God of heaven. You know, uh, that, that, that he's the one that, that owns me, says the Lord of hosts. You know, the king of heaven's army. The one that's over all of the, the control over all the angelic beings, everything that takes place. He says that they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, I am so glad that God gives rewards. And I started thinking about that word jewels. You know, uh, where did jewels come from? You know, uh, and I began to think, you know, they really are a lot like us. Most of them found in the dirt. Most of them are found in the ground. They're dirty. They're rough around the edges. And they're under a lot of pressure and heat. And I thought, man, that's every one of us living in this world today. But the Bible says that God, in that day, um, I will make them my jewels, which means he's going to take us. He's going to knock off the rough edges. He's going polish us up, polish us up. And we're going to be something of great value. We're already something of great value to him. You ever think about that? I'm a jewel of Almighty God. And, and, and he said that this remnant group, this group that stayed faithful to him, that he's going to lift them up. And I begin to think about Psalm 40, where it talks about being raised out of the pit. He lifted me up out of the pit, out of the miry clay. When we, when we make a choice, when we choose to stand for God in a world that doesn't, he lifts us up out of the muck. He lifts us up out of the trash, out of all the garbage that we're surrounded by. He dusts us off and polishes us because we're of very high value to him. And, and, and so I'm so thankful that God here, he, he rewards. He says, on that day, I will make them my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So there's going to be a time when not everyone's going to be spared. There's going to be a time coming when not everyone is going to have the same favor and be counted and considered as jewels to almighty God. They're going to be considered the rock and everything else that's going to be separated and thrown away. And, I, and I'm so thankful that, that the side that, that I'm on because of the choice I made to follow Jesus Christ. And so he says that on that day, I'll make them my jewels. I'll spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Um, I begin to think this week a lot about justice. The, um, you know, there are a lot of people in our world that want justice for this, justice for that. Um, there's coming a day when justice will be served. There's coming a day when the justice of God will be uh, poured out on this world. And I am so thankful and so glad that because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, I'm going to be on the right side of that. Because people are going to get what they, everybody wants what they deserve. Guess what? People that have rejected Christ, people that have, have disregarded God, uh, they are going to get what they deserve. And it's not going to be pretty. But here he's saying that those, that remnant group, those that have been faithful to him, those that, that have stood for him, those that have written in that book, of that book of remembrance, that they're going to be the ones that he spares. He's going to spare them. And then he says, then you shall again discern between righteous and the wicked. They had gotten to a place in their culture with the priests and the way that they were, they were handling the sacrifices and the way people were living, that there were a lot of them that acted religious, but very few of them were living for God. Can anybody testify that that's happening in our world today? That there are a lot of people that profess to be Christians. They profess to, I know God. Well, guess what? Does he know you? You know, uh, um, and, and that was happening there. But, but, but God said here through, through Malachi, he says, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. It was hard to tell the difference, but there's coming a day when the difference is going to be obvious because there's going to be a group that's going to be spared. Those are going to be the righteous. And there's going to be a group that's going to be punished for all eternity. That's going to be the wicked. That's going to be the wicked. And I am so grateful and thankful the truth will finally be known. There won't be anyone else that will be able to pretend anymore. There won't be anyone else that's going to be able to get away with professing one thing with their mouth but having something else in their heart. And so here, as, as, he's, as he's talking through this, he says, Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. There are two categories of people that every human being falls into. There's those that serve God and those that don't. There's, there's two categories of people. There's going to be those that are born again and those that are lost. There are two, uh, there are two categories of people. There are those that are going to spend eternity in glory, and there's going to be those that spend eternity in a real place called hell. That's it. 
And so here, these people, they were all mingled together. You would think that the priestly order would be the ones that were doing it right, and they were going to be the righteous ones. But they were not because their hearts were far from God. Their hearts had turned from God. They weren't the ones that were that were that were part of that remnant group that were staying faithful and true to God in the midst of the mess. And so here he's saying that one day you're going to be able to tell the difference. All the fakers are going to be known. All the ones who have uh, put on a good front are going to be sorted out. It's going to all be known. And, and I'm just so grateful that there's that day of reckoning coming. Um, my prayer is that everybody will get born again between now and then, and they, the separation will be minimal, but I know that that's not going to be the case because the Bible says that narrow is the gate that leads to life, but broad is the road that leads to destruction. There will be a lot more people going to hell than going to glory. And so we see here that, that, that this is going to happen. He says that there's going to be a, a, to be able to discern between the righteous and the wicked, the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. It should be that clear of a distinction for us today. People should know what we stand for by the way we live our lives. People should know who we are in Christ because of the way that we do things, because of our character, because of our integrity, because of our speech, because of everything that we do, because we love people the way that Jesus Christ loves them. And so he says this day is coming. There's going to be this, this uh, separation. You're going to be able to tell without a doubt who the fakers are and who the genuine, real, born-again children of God are. And then in chapter 4, for behold, the day is coming. Um, anytime the Bible says something is coming, that means it's coming. Anytime the Bible says something's going to happen, remember that the things that are going to take place in the future are already history to the Lord. He's the ancient of days. Everything is, it, that he says, he speaks, is going to happen. He says, for behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all, three-letter word that means all, the proud, yes, all, who do wickedly will be stubble. Now remember, if you've ever seen a field that's been cut over, cornfield, whatever it is, that's filled with stubble. That's the leftovers. That's the part that nobody wants, that can't be used for anything. Um, he says that all of the wicked and the proud are going to be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, the God of heaven's army, the one that is in control of everything, says that there is a day coming that the ones who practice wickedness will be burnt up. It's going to happen. And we as believers, what should that uh, do for us? It should motivate us to be able to go share our faith in Jesus Christ with others so that they can avoid being burnt up as the stubble. People should, uh, people should want to live godly lives and want to follow after Jesus Christ because they see us living out our faith and they want what we have. You know, uh, people think that, that, that being a Christian is this list of rules, all these do's and don'ts, do this, don't do that. Uh, but what it really is, it's a relationship with the Father. There's only one thing to do, and that's trust in him and be obedient to whatever he tells you to do. That's it. That's the Christian life. But there are so many people that... that that the enemy has deceived into thinking they can do it their own way. Man, this ain't Burger King. We don't get to pick and choose the things that we do. We surrender in complete obedience. And, and this day is coming when they're all going to be burned up. I tell you what, your pastor has an incredible burning desire to see people saved. I was thinking about it this week. There are three functions for Sardis Baptist Church. To see lost people be saved to be saved people be discipled, and then to go out and make more disciples. That's what the church, that's what it's all about. Uh, there, there are so many uh, churches, they have all these programs and all these, you know, thing, 10 step this, 10 step that land. We need to get back to following what the word of God says so that we can be on the right side so that people won't be burned up as stubble. I love people too much not to tell them about what comes next. And we as believers need to be sure that we're the ones out there on the front lines. We're this remnant group that, that, are, that God is sitting there going, oh, yeah, y'all are encouraging this book of remembrance. We need to be sure that we're on the right side of these things. We need to be faithful to execute the things that he calls us to do. Look at verse, the rest of the verse. He says not only are they going to be burned up, he says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. It's going to be a complete burning. They're not going to be able to come back and sprout back up. One of the hardest things in the world to kill is grass. If you look, uh, you look up through the plains, man, all the grassy plains, they have wildfires burn them up, man, they come right back because it doesn't affect the roots because the roots are still there. They have a strong root system, fertile soil. As soon as they get a little water, it grows right back. Here, the Bible is saying that when God burns them up, that will leave neither root nor branch. It's going to be complete. 
It's going to be complete. They're going to be completely removed. Verse 2, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise. Let me tell you what, that's what I'm preaching on this morning. Um, when I read that, I got blown away. I was, I was uh, what's today, Sunday? I was Thursday years old, whatever day that was, as I was in my time of study. And I looked at that and I said, that says the son of righteousness shall arise. And then I noticed something interesting in your translation. It should be the same. It says the capital S-U-N. It doesn't say S-O-N. You know, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm reading through that. And I was like, oh, the son of righteousness. That's Jesus Christ. He shall arise. And, then, and I thought, wait a minute. It says the son, like S-U-N. That's important because Jesus is the light. And when the son of righteousness arises, that means there's going to be a dawning of a new day when the righteousness of Christ is the thing that's going to permeate everything. There's not going to be any more wickedness because in that day, it's all going to be about him. The son of righteousness shall arise for those that fear his name. And I thought, man, I am so thankful that, that Jesus Christ, this is a double fulfilling prophecy. It was fulfilled when Jesus rose from the grave and it's going to be fulfilled again when he returns to this earth. It said he's coming. He came once, he's coming a second time. And here in Malachi, he was prophesying them both. He says that, that the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. That's beautiful. Um, some of the other translations and manuscripts that I looked at, it actually talked about, it says with healing in his, in his gown. And I started thinking that instead of his wings. And then I began to think about the woman that touched the hem of the garment. The woman that touched the hem of his gown, of his robe, and God provided healing. Uh, the Bible says that the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Because in that moment, that all of the wrongs are going to be made right. And everything that we deal with, that all the infirmities, all of the conditions, all of the heart, everything that we have that causes us grief, agony, and misery is going to be healed in that moment. It's going to be made right. What an incredible thing. I'm so thankful that that's the case, that he will rise in righteousness. His light will dispel all the darkness, and there's, mm, there's coming a great day when Jesus Christ will return. But you notice they, they still have the same caveat. caveat. Well, that's a fancy word. But to you who fear my name. Let me tell you, church, the fear of the Lord matters. The fear of the Lord matters. If we're going to be a remnant church in these last days, if we're going to be that group uh, that are walking faithfully for Christ, that are not being deterred by the crazy things going on in our world, uh, it's going to come when all of us have a healthy, respectful fear of the Lord. That's what matters. We put him first. What does God think? That matters a whole lot more than what anybody else thinks. He's the one that we have to please. We live our lives for an audience of one, and it's him. He says, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out, get this, and grow fat like stall-fed calves. Man, I'm so glad. <laughs> yep, you're all going to be fat, and it's going to be okay. Because we're living in the favor and provision of Almighty God. Because even though everything else is going to be burned up, not us, we're going to live in favor. He said, you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. I am well on my way. Um, <laughs> Y'all aren't supposed to laugh. <laughs> I'm going to repeat. I'm feeling certain. No. Uh, but, and he says, you shall grow out like fat, like stall-fed calves. That means that we're going to be... That, that he's trying to describe to them the level of favor that they're going to have. This would have been a group of people, uh, this remnant group that were treated very poorly. That food and daily provision would have been something that would have been hard to come by. Uh, they would have suffered persecution. They would have suffered all these things. And he's saying, just hang on, because when the son of righteousness shows up, uh, then you're going to go out and be, grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. And I began thinking about the scripture revelation. It said Jesus, when he took his enemies and made them his footstool. There's coming a day when all the enemies of God are going to be put in submission under, under the, as a footstool under the feet of, of the Lord. What a beautiful day that's going to be. And he's saying that these who fear his name are going to be right there in the midst of it with him. They shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. Uh, that's why uh, we, we have to get into a habit of, of uh, not worrying so much about the wicked people in the world. 
because in due time they shall be cut down. In due time they get, they're going to get what's coming to them. Um, and he says, you shall trample the wicked. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, there's another declarative statement that it's going to happen. And then he says the last thing. He says, verse 4, remember the law of Moses. What do we do in the meantime? I'm glad that we have a God that reminds. He reminds us that we need to be faithful. He reminds us that we need to continue uh, uh, to, to be his hands and feet. We need to continue following and faithfully serving after him. Uh, there were a lot of people in this time when Malachi was delivering this message that thought that following God was, was not worth it because they saw the wicked prosper. They saw, they saw the people that were not living and walking in righteousness. They saw all of them. Uh, they had money. They had provision. They had all these things. And the ones that were following after God, their lives were pretty tough. And so it's, it became easy for them to be discouraged. Uh, it, it becomes easy to see uh, people that, that you, we know are crooks, that do criminal things, that do horrible things, but yet they still prosper, and we wonder why. Let me give you some good news, child of God. God knows. <laughs> he remembers. He knows exactly what they're doing, and he knows why. And one day, unless they repent and get born again, they're going to they're gonna be in a bad spot. They're going to be burned up, and they're going to be trampled under our feet as ashes. And my, my problem is, and I'm convicted, that I don't want that to be the case for anybody. I'm looking forward to this holiday season because I'm going to get to see some people, some families, some people that need Jesus. Um, and I know what their end is if they were to die today. And so it, it's just that much more crucial for us to be faithful. He says they remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. We have a God that reminds. He reminds us to be faithful. He reminds us to stay true to him. Go through his word. He tells us time and time again. What does he expect from us? Obedience, faithfulness. And when we do, we'll be part of a group. We're, uh, we're a part of a group that God's already promised to bless. We're a part of a group that, that God's going to show his favor to. We're a part of a group that's not going to be included with the wicked. I can't even comprehend what that's going to be like. A day when there's no more wickedness. A day when there's no more deception. A day when there's no more false anything. Only truth. The truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is going to be heaven. That is going to be heaven. Uh, a, a place where there's no... I don't have to worry about what anybody says because it's true. You know, we're living in a time now with artificial intelligence where you're not... Uh, you're, we're already to the point that you can't believe anything you see, hear, or read on the internet shouldn't be anyway you should get your face out of facebook and put it in this book it's a whole lot amen. better amen <laughs> it's a whole lot better uh, but um because everything can be doctored manipulated and changed you know i, I and 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 if you don't think the enemy's going to use that to pull people even further away from christ you're deceiving yourself he sees that as a powerful tool that he can use to deceive the masses and, and, and so here we have to understand, we have to remember, we have to be reminded that we need to walk in the judgments and the statutes of God. We have to walk in the things of God. We have to, we have to fill our minds with the things of God. We have to, the Bible says to hide the word of God in our hearts so that we won't sin against him. We need to be learning scripture. We need to be spending time in the word so that we can discern the truth from the lies because it's getting more difficult to do. People can take some things and they can make it sound really good. But let me tell you, if it doesn't line up with God's word, run from it. Because the things of God are the things that are going to last. Uh, he's sitting here telling these, these people, remember Malachi delivered a tough message. Um, don't know anything else about him after that. He just delivered the message. He said, God's not happy with y'all. Your sacrifices and your thanksgiving is half-hearted and it doesn't do anything to honor me. And I'm going to wipe y'all out except for this one little group except for those that are still talking about me, except for those that are still being faithful to me, this remnant group, he said, I'm going to preserve them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to exalt them. They're going to be my the jewels to me. I'm going to take care of them. They're going to be precious to me. That's the group I want to be included in. I don't want to be the one burned up. I don't want to be the one cast away. Uh, in our Sunday school, we were talking about Jesus when he was crucified this morning. And when he said, my God, my God, why have for you forsaken me? God turned his back on him. I don't ever want to live my life in such a way that God turns his back on me. 
I don't ever want to live my life in such a way that, that, I'm, that I'm distanced and separated from God. I'm running toward him. I'm chasing after him with everything I've got because that, that is where peace comes from. That is where contentment comes from. That is where hope comes from. There is no hope outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ. The world can try to convince us that there's other ways that we can be happy. It's all a lie from the devil. The only happiness and true joy comes from Jesus Christ, period. It only comes from him. And so we see here in all of this, as we get into thanksgiving, I'm thankful for the character of Almighty God. I'm thankful that his character never changes. He didn't tell Malachi to go prophesy these things and to deliver this message, and then the next one changes his mind, and it'd be something totally different. People want, you want something real and consistent in your life? The Lord Jesus Christ. Chase after the character of Almighty God. That's what's consistent. It never changes. We change. We move back and forth. We, we get away from God for a little while like the children of Israel, and he has to bring some wrath and judgment into our life to bring us back into a relationship with him. Why are we so hard on ourselves? Why do, why do we make life so difficult for ourselves? Man, chase after him every day with all that you have. You'll have a lot of things to be thankful for because you'll be in a, in a place where you're walking in peace with the Father. Your circumstances around you may be absolutely crazy, but let me tell you what, God's not. He will be right there with you. He will walk you through them, and he will provide everything you need in the exact right time because he promised he would. That's what we need to be after. What am I thankful for? I'm thankful for the character of Almighty God. I'm thankful that he reminds me to follow after him. Um, I, I, I'm thankful that he rewards the faithful. I'm thankful that there's a day of reckoning coming. I'm thankful that, that he, is, he is everything to me. I pray that you are too. When we begin to look at, be thankful for the spiritual things in our life as much as we are the physical things in our life, then God can begin to do a work in our lives for his glory. This time for superficial Christianity is over. It's time to get deep into the word of God. It's time to grow in our walk with him. And it's time to be thankful because of who he is. If I have nothing else but him, I have everything that I need. I kept thinking about Job. Everybody's like, oh man, I'm, my life's tough. I'm just like Job. Man, you ain't like Job. I'm not either. The Bible said Job was a righteous man. Have you considered my servant Job? And, and as, jo as Job went through all of the things he had taken away from him, that, that the enemy, God allowed him to, to, God said, you can do anything to him you want, just don't kill him. And Job said, he declared in, the, in his worst possible moment, and though he smite me, yet I will praise him. That's the level of commitment we need to have to God the Father. We need to get to a point where the things of God are that in the forefront of our lives. And when we do, then we'll be truly thankful because we'll realize that everything that we have, the breath, the breath I just took into my lungs, I'm thankful for because it was a gift from God. We got out of bed today because it was a gift from God. Thankful for those things. And when we begin to look at his character and who he is and chase after him and acknowledge him first in all things, we will have so much more to be thankful for. Because all of a sudden, all the things that we prioritize that bring us grief in our life, that we spend all our time and effort and energy chasing after, we'll realize, you know what, that's really not worth it. It's not. The things of eternal value, the things of kingdom value are what matter. I mean, things are great, I get it. But man, be sure that you're, that you're thankful for the right things. Be sure you're being thankful because of who God is and how special he thinks you are. Heavenly Father, God, I just praise you for who you are. I thank you that you're a God that never changes, that you're a God that loves me, that you're a God that sent his son Jesus so that I could be united with you one day. Jesus is the door that gets me to the Father. And God, I just praise you for that. I pray this week that as we reflect on the blessings you poured out on our lives, Father, we're so spoiled, stinking, rotten, Father. God, I just pray that, that we will be mindful of who you are. And God, that we will show gratitude to you by the way that we live our lives, Father. God, we can never praise you enough for what you've done for us. So, Father, I just pray that we will have a true, deep, soul-felt spirit of thanksgiving in our hearts this week, Father. And, God, that it'll continue on day after day after day. That our level of thankfulness, Lord, won't change because your level of generosity never does. So, God, I just uh, we praise you for all you are. God, I pray now as we go into this time of invitation, Lord, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Father, today would be the day 
that they separate themselves, Father, from the, the, from the wicked, Lord, and that they come and take on the righteousness that can only be found through Jesus Christ. And God, the, uh, the, they can become that special treasure that you created them to be, Father. So God, I just pray that, that you will have your way and your will in our invitation. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to sing hymn number 598. Wherever he leads, I'll go. That's what it's all about. You respond as we sing. stand with me. I always get in trouble because I don't get in front of this camera here. This is Corey Ford and she is coming to uh, join Sardis Baptist Church. Uh, she was saved and I remember your testimony you told me the other night. Saved in 2009, baptized and uh, uh, wants to come and be a part of what God's doing here in the life of Sardis Baptist Church. So if you agree with me in receiving her based on her profession of faith, would you say amen? Amen. 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 We're glad you're here. You've been, they've been here faithfully serving for years. Chris, come stand with her. Um, and um, we're just thrilled, thrilled, thrilled uh, what God's going to do in your life. We're going to be a blessing to you because y'all are already a blessing to us. Uh, when we talked earlier this week, I said Tripp was our first baby in the nursery when we got here. And he was what? One, two? About five or six months. Ah, little bitty. He's grown a little. <laughs> He's grown a lot. <laughs> so... <laughs> But uh, you come by after we pray and, and, and shake, the, shake their hand and just let them know we're glad that she's, she's here and come to be a part of what God's doing here. So don't forget our fellowship afterward. We're going to be out in the fellowship hall. Uh, we're going to celebrate. Uh, this puts us only 12 fellowships behind. So um, uh, at Bible study, uh, somebody had told Dustin Hood, they said, man, is that all y'all do is baptize people and eat? <laughs> and I said, man, I hope so. I said, I hope we got a 400-pound preacher and an $8,000 water bill. So uh, praise the Lord. God's doing the work here, and it's just great to be a part of. Thank you for being here today. You glad you came to church? Amen, amen. We've, you blessed me with your presence. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you in Jesus' name. So thankful for who you are. Thank you for the privilege of being your church, Father. And God, we just pray. Thank you for Corey coming to join, Lord, uh, and be a part of what God's doing here. And God, we just pray that you will uh, bless bless her, bless their family, Lord. And God, just as we as we move forward serving you together, God, there is nothing greater than a wonderful, loving church family. 
So, Father, I just uh, pray that as we uh, go from this place this week, as we're traveling, as we're uh, about our business, Lord, seeing family, friends, God, that you will just put a hedge of protection around us and watch over us, God. We have so much to be thankful for. God, we're just, we're so blessed. God, I just thank you for the food that we're about to eat. We just ask you to bless that to our bodies, Lord, and, and bless the hands that prepared it. God, we just love you. We praise you. We give you glory in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go in peace. Y'all stand right there. Okay. Amen. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shopping. I'll shake your hand, buddy. <laughs>